Hey everybody, Dan the Wolfman here, and yesterday I made a video that I'm sure is going to get me tons of hate called Jesse Encamp Karate No Good. Now in it, I was trying to say I'm not trying to be too mean, and I'm wishing uh, Oliver Encamp, who is about to fight in Bellator, good luck. And I do want Oliver to do really well, and guess what? Congratulations, Oliver won in a great comeback fight, his fight at Bellator last night. So I know a lot of people are going to be jumping on me as soon as this uh, Jesse Ann Camp Karate No Good video goes live. I want to say congrats to Oliver. So let's go through the fight with a little bit of pictorial history. Of course, I've done a lifetime of martial arts, four black belts, fought pro MMA, fought Daito Juko Kudo World Championships, no gi advanced, and absolute tournaments and things of that nature. All right, so let's get into... Oliver's fight, what I think he did good and what he did bad, with a little pictorial history right here. We see here in the first round, he's fighting a wrestler, and actually it's Oliver who is the grappler, because you think you would fear his karate, and it's really his submissions that everyone should fear. So originally this uh, fighter, Lemminger, Lemminger, had him pressed against the cage and kept going for a bunch of guillotines and a bunch of fairly low percentage ninja chokes. I have four way, ways to ninja choke video you might want to check out. He didn't really ever have it too secured, but he had some of the guillotines secured pretty good. Seems Oliver must have prepared for those guillotines and trust his guillotine defense, or maybe he's hard to choke. I don't know. So we got Oliver now driving him into the cage. The guy's kind of searching for too many guillotines, and therefore he's giving up the takedowns to Oliver and Cap. 416 in the first round. We see Oliver on top and a half and half butterfly guard. And now he kind of sits up against the cage, and Oliver goes to try to land a couple of ground and pound punches. Kind of shoves his knee through to mount a little bit. And now you see he's really not, but he's in a leg ride, leg ride position like Khabib. And uh, once he triangles his legs at some point against the cage, which he did a good job of, I call that putting on the shackles. Whether you like it or not, I think it's an appropriate term, putting on the leg shackles on somebody. I mean, if that's the handcuff or the Dagestani handcuff behind the back, I think shackles are appropriate. And you might want to talk to some Irishmen and stuff, but I'm sure some of your SJWs will get at me. Anyway, here with the guillotine attempt. Uh, now... This is a fairly good attempt. Um, Lemminger, Lemminger, whatever his name is, what he should have done here was put in a reverse lockdown. You see his left leg is hooking Oliver's leg. He should have triangled his leg and then put his right foot under Oliver's foot and then stretched the knees together down and out in Beverly Hills. You see me do that with the catcher arm through guillotine and stuff. A reverse lockdown, not a traditional scorpion lock, but a reverse scorpion lock or a reverse lockdown. My fourth black belt is in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. My third black belt is in highest on grappling system. Second black belt in Daito Juko Karate. First black belt in Taekwondo. And here, Oliver is on top. 144 left in the round. He's doing a lot of good cage control. We see one of those ninja choke attempts uh, from Lemminger. And now, as he's starting to get up, actually, Oliver throws a round kick to the body. You can't hit the head. You can't hit the body. So, I um, mean, good precision there. And he finishes the round on top. Kind of a guillotine for a second. Pops his head out again. He must really trust his defense. There was two times, I think, where he got to full guard or stretching him out good, where there was enough leg pressure that I actually got worried. But he must have been feeling his head was coming out because right as the legs come around a full guard, then it, then it pop, his head popped out. So, it's a feel thing. You can't always know unless you're in there. And see, now he's throwing the legs to the side, trying to land that big right punch. One second left. Looks like he does. And that's the end of the round. Starts round two with a right high kick. It should be set up at least with a jab, a long hook, and then a right high kick. Guys, you can set things up with punches that are unintended to land. The previous video I said you don't only want to throw strikes in distance where you line and land unless it's a setup. So don't just come out kicking. You want to go jab, long hook, uh, high kick, or something like that. Uh, so just like his brother, not setting up the kicks very well. He's just throwing them naked. And then goes for another one, it looks like. And then, boom, gets caught in a punch bliss there. And boom, you see this kind of right corkscrew uppercut. 
uh, hits him pretty good. And look at where he is. He's down. He's giving up his own structure. Um, I'd have to watch all of his fights, and there's not like all the fight footage or some highlights and stuff of Oliver. He gives up his structure here. So even if you get tagged good, guys, this is a very important lesson for Oliver. Look, his structure's all down, and now he's down. He's knocked down, and he gets clipped really good after this. It doesn't matter if you get rocked. Come to a shell, any kind of shell. Look at my 52 block series. But then you should start crazy monkeying deep covers. Deep covers. Not this. That's not a cover. Little MMA gloves, bare fist slips through. You need to be just seeing it. And even if you're dizzy, even if you're back up against the cage, you go, go, cover, 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 cover. Power three, power three off the cage like Rampage did. Power three, shift three, shift hooks. Cover, 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 cover. And then eventually fire back once you take those first five punches where the they start getting weak and then you fire back, okay? Take those first three to five. Cover, cover, cover. Take what you can, but keep your spinal structure. Everyone wants to slip and move and look cool. Like even a good striker like Jeff Chan, he slips too much, he ducks under too much, and then he will duck into high kicks and stuff, as you see. If he fought at a higher level of MMA, even a pretty good striker, guy, I like his videos, you would see him eating the strikes because of that, and that's something Oliver needs to work on. They need to do, work on some uh, drills, pretending you're rocked, and it against the cage is a good way to drill, and people just, you got to you gotta cover up, man. You got to learn how all these different ways of covering and defending yourself while keeping your structure. You don't want to give up your structure, guys, and you need to do some some rock drills, pretending as if you're rocked and what to do in those circumstances. Uh, even later on, Leoto Machido, we saw that in the fight. Leoto didn't win, guys, spoiler alert, um, but he looked flat. And when you're older, I'm 45, he's 43, it looked like he didn't warm up enough. When you're older, you have to have enough cardio, which is really hard, if your body's beat up over the years, you got to have enough cardio to warm up enough. Otherwise, you're flat footed. And his reactions, even jumping back karate style, were late. And I knew he was about to get starts when I was watching it. Okay, so now he's caught in the well uh, with his head again. A little too risky, Oliver. Maybe you're very good at the guillotine defense, but you're playing with fire a little too much. Now, it does give you the takedown a lot. Does The guy goes for it, and you're able to get top position. Now, he's rocked at this point, getting up here with the wizard, dogfight position. I have a dogfight video. You might want to learn all the positions of dogfight where you can wizard down with that overhook, put that shoulder down. There's all kinds of stuff, cool stuff I teach in the ultimate dogfight position video. And now the guy takes his back, but he's high. Now, in a second here, he did throw in a three-quarter or power half, and Pushing the head down, which is good, which then you should go to the Suli of stretch if you're the guy on the back that's getting too high, which is like a hamstring stretch. So right here, he could have grabbed the ankle instead of messing with the arm and should have been going for the Suli of uh, hamstring stretch. See, his face is all down, so now his structure is bad, which means Oliver is about to slip out and slips out. Here you see the ninja choke attempt, but you see it's kind of on the face. See, it's not deep. You got to really turn that elbow down like a V choke to the neck to then over the top, unless if it's a power uh, front rear naked. That's a little different. But a ninja choke, you got to get in the pit. Oh, look at that. In the pit right there. Okay. So uh, Oliver is still pretty rocked, right? And then he gets rocked again with his big right hand, 325. And now you see he's wobbling. Oh, he's giving up his own structure here. Guys, you got to stand tall. Everyone tells you not to. They don't know what they're talking about. Punching power, striking power, everything comes from a strong spinal alignment. You can slip a little bit, but bobbing, weaving under an MMA, and even kickboxing isn't so great. You're relying on speed, and later on in your career, that speed and those reaction times are going to die out. Father Time is undefeated. We got Oliver on bottom, and it looks like he's going for the Kimurata. And yes, that's what it was called, the Kimurata. When they brought back the name in a 70s newspaper in Brazil, it wasn't even known as the Kimura, you brainwashed people. It's a double wrist lock or Udi Garami. And when they did bring the name back is Kimurata, and then later changed to Kimura in the late 70s after Kimura, you know, doing it to Helio Gracie. But for all that time, it wasn't known as that. Uh, now we see him stuck in an arm triangle choke. We see his left foot is in there for a butterfly guard, and he's stretching him out. So he's okay. Now, right away, he goes to New York. Uh, Big John said missed control, but he has an overhook on uh, his right arm, so really that's New York position, where you can land good elbows. 
I did, you know, rubber guard stuff for two and a half years. Uh, and all it did was give me a bad knee that I just had that surgery on and a bad hip with calcification. So thanks for ruining people's lives. But anyway, it's very easy to pass. And in a second, he's going to pass. Why? Because that right leg of Oliver's isn't tight. That knee needs to be tight or that right foot has to be uh, hip with inner thigh master, Suzanne Summer style pressure. It's got to be pushing in and it's the dead leg. And so it's so very easy for someone skilled. And that's why you don't see rubber guard. I, I use it a little bit. I like Sean Williams leg hook guard better to land elbows and then go to Uma Plata and stuff. But um, the dead leg is easy to pass. And that's why you don't see it in any high level competitions. And the round ends, and he's like, woo, because he had gotten dropped once and rocked once really bad, where he had to give up structure. You need, We need to see more of the karate. We need to see the setting up of the kicks with the hands. We need to see combinations. I would like to teach Oliver punch blitz spears with a shift punch. And the shifting out here, I would like to teach him all my neo-striking system with all my shifts and blitzes. Um, uh it has to be not just kick when I don't know what to do when I'm tired or whatever. You have to set these things up. I want Oliver to do good. And here are some replays. You see him getting rocked. These are replays from second round. The big right hand drops him. Uh, there was an uppercut that hurt him. And the whole punch series, look at that there. Look at him bending down into it after he'd already gotten hit. These things are not good you want to keep your structure stay tight now yes if you can move on the outside and parry and slip and seagull salute and all that stuff that's great but you got to learn your covering people how are you fighting in mma without knowing how to do a good tight one unit cover not this banging into you maybe you should watch my videos on these things uh and here he tries two spinning hook kicks in a row without a setup i'm gonna say that's a mistake even though that's what led to his comeback victory I'm going to say it's a mistake. Again, it was boom and then boom, and you're going to the wall too many times. Usually that is not going to pay off when he gets to a higher level. You know, but he's a submission fighter. He's a very good submission fighter. In fact, I think it's Pancrase. Uh, you know, I'm a Pancrase guy. I fought the Pancrase champion in 2000. I commentated the first five live Pancrase events, 272, 76, on UFC Fight Pass. I was the color commentator. Moved back to Japan to do so. Um, so... I like the pancreas style, the hybrid catch wrestling, catch jitsu style, the transitional submissions from any position style. But when let's get that striking back down and for MMA, make that karate work for MMA. So he goes for the spinning hook kick, not once, but twice, which leads to his leg wrapping around the head, like almost at the knee pit. And now the takedown happens just at the beginning of the third round. But look at this. What is this? I don't know what this is. They're calling it a buggy choke. Is that a buggy choke? Is it a buggy choke variation? It's not the main buggy choke because the right arm usually would be over the head and then the legs behind the head on the far side, not the leg over the head and the body through. So it's kind of a reverse triangle choke, a buggy choke variation. It's not a reverse buggy choke where you sit up and give your back like the fake headlock uh, position or after, you know, a headlock hip throw where you can set up the, the tricky Udi Garami and my non-traditional side mount uh, escape seminar. I taught that uh, in Puerto Rico at Matt Sarah, Sarah BJJ Puerto Rico. Anyway, sorry, jujitsu makes me get a little off track. Look at him locking it up here. So he's got his right arm by his head. He's hugging it. He has his right leg over the neck. The left leg is now on the other side of the body, but triangled. And he's got a gable grip well, basically a gable grip. His hands are together in this picture behind the head for leverage. Now he's getting his grip together and we're going through it. And now you see he's locked up and everything's compressed. Um, let me, Joe would have to move his right elbow, uh, would have to like mess with his head somehow and posture up and get things separated. He could try to bring the right arm over and push the top of the head with the elbow to twist the spine out of alignment, do some system of biomechanics. Steven Stringles, motherfuckers, which you might, I don't know, but you know, there's other things out there you haven't experienced. Why is everyone talking about stuff they haven't experienced? Anyway, and now we are locking this bad boy up in another comeback victory, like I think he did with spinning back fist. 
Let's see. Okay, so now he's got this grip, and he's pulling in on the head, and everything's compressed. He's posturing up on his leg, but he's tilted. You would have to try and get that right arm over here and spread him apart, use his elbow on uh, basically his temple to move Oliver's temple and stretch everything out, and that left elbow needs to cut back down. Um, not good. Great submission. Great, interesting submission, guys. And we'll see another picture here in a minute in the replays. But look at the spin. The distance is way too close for the spin to ever land, and there's no setup. There wasn't Kazushi movement going into it. So I think Oliver is gassing himself out a bit. I wonder if his cardio was up to snuff, where it really should be with all the heavy grappling in the first round. Fills your muscles up with lactic acid. Did some great grappling, great wrestling, out-wrestled the wrestler. Uh, great leg control against the cage, putting on the shackles, Khabib style. And here we see a different angle of this, I guess, a buggy choke variation. What do I know? I'm only a double black belt in grappling. One of like three to five in the world. The others are older Brazilians and maybe one early student under Gene LaBelle, under Gokar and Gene LaBelle. And uh, Steven Seagal, when are you going to call me? Anyway, here we are and a beautiful finish by Oliver and Cap raising the hand for the comeback victory again. But I would like to see better striking with setups. I would want to see more structure. And um, I can congratulations to him. He's a guy I'd love to work with uh, in all aspects of MMA, of which I am a master of, and grappling, but also the shifting, because he has the timing and the Maya distance, usually when he's not forcing it, where he could set things up. He doesn't have the pro uh, Oliver... Uh, I'm sorry, Jesse and Cap, if you see my other video, I'm going to get a lot of hate. Doesn't have proper Maya, doesn't have, which is range, which is distance. He doesn't have that. And you should be setting your kicks up with your hands. Or you need the right distance, the footwork, like drawing, and then you can do kick, punch, punch, kick series and stuff that I teach. I actually do a lot of kicks. That's because I was sparring like heavyweight champions and heavyweight champions with anywhere from a reach of 74 to 81 inches when I only have like a 71 inch reach. So when you see all my sparring against these giants, and when I sparred Tim Sylvia and Fabricio Verderm and Cain Velasquez and Leota Machida and Rampage Jackson and all these huge guys, I had to make up for it with setups with the footwork. Look at my Better uh, better Sistema vs. MMA 2 video. Oh, boom. We're going to drop all kinds of hate on me today. But you might learn some things from a guy who's actually studied, I don't know, 35 years, BJJ, catch wrestling, MMA, hardcore, 25 years, a little bit, two years before that, dabbling in judo and grappling and stuff. Anyway, guys, get my competitive Street Jiu-Jitsu DVD, four and a half hours, highly rated on BJJ Fanatics or EffectiveSelfDefense.com. Right now, oh, 43% off Mayhem 2022. And uh, yeah, I competed against Mayhem in a grappling tournament. Mayhem Miller from Bully Beatdown. I tested the Bully Beatdown rules. We got actual stories, you know. But anyway, guys, I hope you liked it. Thumbs up, share, subscribe, and get down there in the comments. And let me know what you think. Take care, everybody. Kaboom. Stay safe.